Suzanne. I'll be with you in a moment. Mr. Burkle, aren't you going ashore at Stockholm? You can eat a lot of smorgasbord between now and midnight when we sail. No, I think I'm getting a cold. Well, when we stopped in England, you thought you were coming down with a gout. In Denmark, you thought you had chillblains. In Holland, it was spots before the eyes. We're going to run out of countries before you run out of ailments. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Burkle. We know a wonderful restaurant where we ate the last time we were here. Oh, you just love it. It'll make you feel better if you get off the ship. You. I don't want her to see me. Who? The woman who wants to marry me. Would you mind beginning at the beginning? Well, I met Ingrid. Ingrid Johansson. That's her full name. The last time we were here. I made the mistake of turning on me charm. Somehow she got the idea I wanted to marry her. Well, what's wrong with marriage? What do I want with a wife? I'm married to the sea. It doesn't talk back. And when you leave it, you don't have to pay alimony. All right, have it your own way. Are you going into town with us? I don't think I dare. If Ingrid caught me, she'd break me in two. And don't think she couldn't. She runs a gymnasium and Swedish massage. <laughs> well, there's only one honorable thing to do, Cedric. Go to Ingrid and tell her the truth. The truth? Yes, that you're already married. She'd never fall for an old wheeze like that. She would if your better half showed up. And backed up your story. It might work at that. But who could I get? Her. Oh, no, you don't. You do it, Susanna. You're a much better liar. I resent that. <laughs> All right. You go on ahead, and I'll give you a couple of minutes alone with her. And then at the psychological moment, I'll pop in. You're a true pal. A gym's at 17A, Calabargan. Now, don't let me down. If you do, I'm a dead duck. They don't call me old faithful for nothing. <laughs> Give me some money for a hat. Give me some money for a coat. Give me some money for a dress. What are you Give me talking some money about? <laughs> Practicing to be a wife. Miss Pomeroy, I want to see you for a minute. I was just talking to Mr. Burkle. He isn't very happy. Well, what did you have in mind, sir? Miss Pomeroy, my job is to run the ship. Yours is to keep the passengers happy. All righty. I'll buy him some comic books when I'm in town. They ought to be a riot in Swedish. <laughs> Oh, but I can't. You see, I promised... I've got to... do what you want me to. Give me some money for a hat, give me some money for a coat, give me some money for a dress. <laughs> Mining time, Mr. Burkle. I just heard the funniest story. Would you see if there you was... can open this bottle for me, please? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Well, there won't be anything else. I'll, I'll just run along. Oh, there, there is something else. Would you read this to me? All of it? Well, where did you leave off? Just start at the beginning. You won't be able to put it down. Be sick and enjoy it. <laughs> Chapter one. Sickness began with the ancient Neanderthal man, but he was too primitive to enjoy oh, please, it. please, please. Not so fast. Sorry. Your author sincerely believes that anyone can be well, but it takes character to be sick. <laughs> Chapter three. Medicine can be fun. Do not gulp your medicine. Savor each spoonful. Modern drugs include...
Boreomycin high fever hogs Penicillin Epsom salts Take one at morning, take one at night Thank goodness you are out like a light <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> what I mean is, I'm already married. Married? Cad that I am, but there it is. Met her in New York. We came across the Atlantic together. Got married in London. This woman, what is she like? Susan, I, I mean my wife. Oh, she's young, full of life, beautiful, <laughs> happy. Cedric, darling, there you are. Here she is. How naughty of you to run away from your little wife. This is the beauty you met in New York. It was a rough crossing. Oh, Cedric, my dear darling husband, there you are, my sweet. Did him stucky wucky miss him snooky wooky. <laughs> this man is your husband? It happened in the Alps. When our lips met and the ski wax melted in our pockets, we knew it was love. You are a phony. <laughs> and you are even phonier. At eight o'clock, I will expect you here. I want my future husband to meet my family. You're a fine fixer-upper, you are. Don't blame me. How was I to know you're a bigamist? <laughs> Just relax. Twelve more hours and we'll be on the high seas. <laughs> Remember now, if Ingrid comes looking for me, I suddenly kick the bucket. Well, I don't know if that'll stop her. She's out to get a man, dead or alive. You had to propose when you know. That Cedric, that kind of... what are you doing in there? Come out of there. Well, it's my idea, sir. You see, there's a woman here in Stockholm who's trying to force Cedric to marry her. Marry her? With no provocation from him? Well, I... None whatsoever. Oh, another one of those predatory females are trying to make honest seamen their prey, huh? Exactly. Well, I'll not have my men hiding aboard ship like criminals. Come along, Cedric. Uh, but, 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 Captain Huxley, well, you've got enough to do just steering the ship straight. Now, you shouldn't get into anything. I certainly should. I'm going to make an example of this woman. Now, oh, come along, Cedric. Well, could, couldn't you just write her a letter? Yeah, wait for me. Oh, <laughs> well, which one is she? I'll go fetch it. Maybe we ought to forget the whole thing. Nonsense. I consider this a very serious matter, Miss Pomeroy. Ingrid, this is my skipper, Captain Simon Huxley. How do you do? Now, Miss Ingrid, I'm a man of few words. I consider that marriage is a sacred institution, and I will not have you use it as a trap to snare one of my men. Well said. Let's shove off, mateys, while we're ahead. Just a moment. I did not propose to this man. He proposed to me. Why, oh, Cedric, I'm shocked. To think that a member of my crew would try to deceive a lovely, charming, and attractive woman. Now, I know the problems of being a bachelor. I happen to be one myself. But that is no excuse. Captain, for... did you mean what you said? 
I am lawfully charming. Attractive. Oh, I don't exactly remember what I said. Oh, I do, sir. You said, and I quote, lovely, charming, attractive, unquote. I like you better than this pipsqueak. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. Hey, come on, Captain. Whoa. Hurry! Miss Pomeroy. Yes, sir. I want to thank you. Thank me? Yes, for introducing me to Miss Ingrid. I just don't quite know how to show my appreciation. By, by pushing me overboard? <laughs> That's a lovely idea. <laughs> Look on the bright side, Captain Huxley. You went to the aid of a distressed seaman. Without thought of personal sacrifice, you placed yourself directly in the line of fire. Lord Nelson himself could have done no more. Miss Pomeroy, who writes your material? It's fascinating. <laughs> the important thing is, Cedric is off the hook. We sail at midnight and you'll never see ing, ing, ing. Oh, I'm so sorry about this, Captain. But your Ingrid will sew it on for you. Oh, that, that won't be necessary. Besides, you won't have time. Oh, yes, I will. I bought passage for the rest of the cruise. So we can get to know each other better. In three months. Who knows? <laughs> I just can't wait until we get out to sea. I understand that moonlight nights do things to young people. Oh, your captain is so wonderful. He's showing me the entire ship. How do you like the way she was looking at him? I was more interested in the way he was looking at me. What did I do? All I did was lie when I should have told the truth. Then I told the truth when I should have lied. Now for three months, she's going to be Nuji, I've got to get her off this ship before we sail. Now, let's see. Hey, wait a minute. No. She's stronger than both of us. <laughs> I got it. We tell her the captain's a bluebeard wanted for murdering 12 wives. Oh, fine. The story gets around, the police hear about it, the captain winds up in the electric chair. Well, no plan's perfect. <laughs> no, Jean. This is Ingrid's first sea trip. So what? So she might be just a little nervous. So... <laughs> So this is where you run your ship. It must be a great responsibility. Yes, well, indeed it is. And if I may say so, your gymnasium is your ship. That's why I can understand why you've abandoned her. Oh, but I have a very able assistant. Besides, it will not always be my gymnasium. It will also belong to whoever I happen to Maddie. Oh, yes, well, uh, whoever he is, uh, far away though I hope he be, I wish him luck. <laughs> Mr. Pomeroy, what are you doing on the bridge? Well, I thought Miss Johansson might need a sedative. Calmer nerves in case it happens again. But there is nothing wrong with my nerves. In case what happens again? <laughs> well, the last time we left port, the captain forgot to untie the lines, pulled half the pier out to sea. I did what? Unfortunately, the Copenhagen Municipal Band was still on it. Now, see here, Miss Pomeroy. Oh, he's afraid you'll find out what a bad navigator he is. What a bad navigator? And leave the ship. Miss Pomeroy, of all the... Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't understand. Yeah. And it won't happen again, my dear. Though, uh, from now on, I'm going to keep a weather eye out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Captain. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm nearsighted anyhow. <laughs> Man the lifeboat. Women and children first. Such a boat isn't sinking. Oh, not yet, but with Captain Huxley in the wheel, I want a good seat. Oh, you're not <laughs> We're stuck on the ship, but you still have time to get off and live out your natural life. 
fact is something to consider. Uh, don't worry about us. When we're sloshing around in the icy waters fighting the sharks, we'll think about you. Safe, warm, and dry in Stockholm. Yes. My mind is made up. Best decision you ever made. If my captain goes down with the ship, I go with him. <laughs> Care to buy a ticket for 25 cents? Make yourself a fortune. Sure. Just take it out of what you owe me. Number 47. What's it mean? If Ingrid hooks the captain 47 days from now, you win. I kept number one for myself. Susanna, you're true blue. Thanks to you, I'm a free man. And thanks to you, I'm a dead duck. Oh, Look what I've got. Care to buy a ticket in a pool? Oh, I couldn't afford to win. It put me in a higher bracket. <laughs> what have you got? You remember those girls that were on the last cruise? Uh, you mean the ones who were entering the beauty contest? This is from Yvonne. Oh. Anything interesting? She's in Hollywood working as a car hop. Well, and you remember Loretta. Uh-huh. Well, you know that she married the judge of the beauty contest? No. She married the... She married the... The judge. Hello. Now, Miss Pomeroy, this is nonsense. Having a contest three hours before we sail. And me with a problem that we won't go into here. But mine is microscopic compared to the problem of the one who's responsible for mine. Oh, believe me, sir, there's madness in my method. Uh, method in my madness. Well, there certainly is better be. I think you'll understand if you take a look at this letter to Nuji, the part I underlined. Well, good girl. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin our contest. The judge will choose the man deemed worthy of the title, Mr. Ocean Queen. Of course, this doesn't mean he has to be built like a ship. <laughs> For our judge, we've selected an eminent authority on bachelors, Miss Ingrid Johansson. <laughs> Just pick the man who appeals to you the most. Uh, you know, the kind of fellow a girl would give up an older man for. Uh, the contestants are ready. Oh, well, we're ready with our first contestant. Well, go bring him out. Okay, but remember our agreement. I get my pick of the losers. <laughs> our first contestant is Mr. Ed Fowler. Mr. Fowler is the winner of the deck tennis tournament, runner-up of the shuffleboard playoff, and, from what I hear, not bad on the promenade deck in the moonlight. <laughs> Lawyer, brilliant future. His uncle owns the firm. You think, Captain, we met only a few hours ago, and already we are so close together. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next contestant? You all know Jim Stanford, well known as a great outdoor lover. Not bad indoors, either. <laughs> Owns own home, is only a bachelor because the right girl hasn't come along yet. He's a fine-looking lad. Be a wonderful catch for any girl. Oh, let's hope he finds one. <laughs> contestant number three? This is Muscles Mahoney, All-American guard and straight-A student. The professors were afraid to give him anything less. <laughs> Nuji, you can let go now. But it isn't easy. <laughs> now there's a hunk of man. Yes, you couldn't blame a woman for going for a man like that. Hmm. Is it true that the captain of a ship 
can marry a couple at sea. It certainly is. But what if one of the couple is the captain himself? Uh, th th there will be a slight delay. <laughs> We're sunk. She didn't go for any of them. She must be off her rocker to go for an underweight wreck like Cedric and an overweight wreck like the captain. A perfect specimen she turns her nose up at. Of course. Of course. She wanted to build Cedric up. She wants to build the captain down. She's Jim happy. Oh, if we could only find a worse wreck than either one of them. <laughs> Twelve A. I'll stall till you get back. Don't rush your decision. Just take your time. There's no hurry. But we've got lots of time before the ship sails. Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nugent seems to have found a last-minute contestant. Please, my I'm going to bed. Here he is, folks. Mr. Ralph Burkle, contestant number three and a half. I, I mean, a contestant number four. Fine. Fine. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The legs. The arms. The chest. Oh! <coughs> oh. A lot of work to be done here. <coughs> I pick this man for your Mr. Ocean Queen. <laughs> did I do it or didn't I? You certainly did. Or did you? The way she's going from man to man, she may boomerang back to me before the trip is over. I'll fix that, too. Folks, an unexpected special announcement. The winner of our contest will be allowed an extra week's stay in Stockholm and be picked up by our sister ship. An extra week? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm afraid that'd be too costly. Oh, all expenses paid. Compliments of our own Captain Huxley. Well, thank you, Captain. Thank, thank you very much. Well, I'll go get my bag packed right away. Oh! That's the best investment you ever made. Now she's out of your hair. Have you lost what little reason you have left? You got rid of the wrong one. You want a bet? Captain, may I have a word with you? I know you will be terribly disappointed, but I must turn in my ticket. You must? Oh, yes, you must. That poor Mr. Burkle. He needs me more than you do. Yes, he does indeed. Yes, poor Mr. Burkle. And now, I must go pack my bags. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye. How do I look? It should happen to me. Oh, Miss Pomeroy, Miss Nugent. I want to thank you very much for rescuing me from the clutches of that predatory woman. Oh, we didn't do it just for you, sir. We did it for all decent, self-respecting womankind. Any woman who would use fraud and deceit to trap a man deserves what she gets. Well, it's very commendable. Carry on. Here he comes. Okay, do your stuff. The beautiful, lovely Miss Pomeroy is about to faint. Won't somebody help her?